Okay, so we now know that CSS3 isn't a single standard. It's a collection of modules that extend the core 2.1 specification. So how can you tell what's new and how far along your favorite CSS3 capability is to being finalized? Well, I'm going to recommend a couple of resources that can help you understand what's going on with the development of CSS3. First, I want to recommend the W3C's Introduction to CSS3. Although it was published in 2001, this document does a really good job of explaining the logic take you to a brief description of it and a timeline for that specific track. To help make sense of the module status, it helps if you know the steps a document goes through on its way to recommendation. Documents are first published as a public working draft. This is the stage where most of the collaborative work behind standards is done. As the working draft stage comes to a close, the standard will go into what is termed last call. A last call is essentially a way of letting people know that the standard is about to move to the next stage of testing. So any reviews, edits, or additional implementations need to be done before the proposed deadline. After last call, a standard moves on to the candidate recommendation status. Although the standard is considered stable at this point, implementations are studied and changes can be made at this stage if required. From there, specifications move on to the proposed recommendation and published recommendation status. Using those as a guide, it's pretty easy to see which modules are stable and which ones still might see significant changes prior to publication. A quick glance shows us that modules such as the CSS3 selectors, multi-column layout, media queries, and basic user interface are the furthest along of the CSS3 specifications and are most likely to be implemented now. By keeping track of the current state of CSS3 modules and their proposed timelines, you'll have a better idea of which aspects of CSS3 to focus on first and which ones you'll need to start paying attention to in the near future. In fact, I'll use the same approach for this title. We're going to be taking a deeper look at the areas of CSS3 that are the furthest towards recommendation status and are currently being implemented in browsers now. For the other areas of CSS3 that are still very much in development, we'll take a broader look at how future implementations might evolve.